What's up guys, this is Cody, the Improper Engineer, and it's currently 2018. Gosh, I hope everyone had a fantastic Christmas and a great New Year and that you brought it in the right way and you remember how you brought it in. Hopefully that you're not feeling too bad about how you brought it in. No regrets, right? So let's talk about the Prusa MK3 for just a second. Now, it's a fantastic piece of machinery. It has a lot of new features, a lot of new sensors. It's supposed to be a lot sturdier. I mean, it looks like a great machine. But there's only one thing that I really, really, really wanted out of the MK3 that I currently don't have in any of my setups. And that's the removable bed. It's not just any type of removable bed, like it's not just clamped on. First of all, it's a spring steel sheet. Now spring steel is a type of steel that's used to manufacture springs. And it's very strong and it, no matter how much you compress it, it's always going to go back to its original shape. Not always, but you know, for the most part, it's going to go back to its original shape. That's probably why Joseph Prusa chose it in his latest MK3 build because once you remove it, you can flex it without having to worry about actually putting any dents or imprints in the sheet itself, and you can place it right back where it was and it'll be completely flat. So this holiday season got me thinking, what can I do to have my manufacturing process sped up just a little bit or optimized? So I had to sit down and think about what was taking the most time, um, whether it's printing, whether it's design, whether it's putting everything together, or if it's shipping and labels. And honestly, I've got everything pretty optimized as much as I can, with the exception of removing my prints. Now, if it's on a glass build plate, what I was doing is I was removing the whole build plate, immediately setting in front of a fan and letting, and letting the cold air do its thing. Once it cooled off in the course of a couple minutes, it would just pop right off. I could literally flick it and it would fall off the glass plate. That's great and all, but that's a couple minutes that my printer's not printing. And while that doesn't sound like a lot, when you're running hundreds of orders a day, that's quite a bit of time that you're losing. So then I got to thinking, what if I could do a removable plate that would allow me to flex my pieces off a lot faster? You can do that with glass, but I don't recommend it. So I have a PEI sheet that I've had laying around for a while, and I thought I could use that, so I got to tinkering around. Now, the problem is that unless you stick PEI to something, or at least a sheet that I have, it warps once it starts getting warm. Once you heat it up, the edges start to curl up. And that's obviously not gonna work if you're trying to get a good print all the way around the bed. I could have just stuck it to the bed using 3M double-sided tape, but that's not really gonna solve my problem because then I can't remove it. I was also a little bit fed up with printing on glass and glue. I wasn't always positive that my prints were going to stick the very first layer. I'd have to sit there and watch it, and if something messed up, I'd have to remove it, add more glue, check the level, blah, 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 blah. So I got to looking around at other solutions. I've used BuildTac in the past. I hate BuildTac. It could be because I wasn't using it properly in the beginning, which is a very good possibility, but I did not like BuildTac. I heard a lot of people give Lock Build some good reviews, so I decided why not. I ordered a 305 by 305 millimeter lock build sheet off Amazon, and once I got it in, I realized it's essentially the same thing as Build Tech, but I just spent the money on it, so I figured it was worth a try. So I received my lock build, and at this point, I knew that I had to stick it to a sheet of metal of some sort. Spring steel and a 12 by 12 width is very hard to come by. The widest that I could find it is six by 12, which still isn't wide enough, and that's not gonna work for me. So then I went to Lowe's and Home Depot because I'm too impatient to order something offline, and I got to looking at their sheet stock that they've got. Now I picked up a couple different versions of sheet stock, um, varying both in diameter and material that it's made out of. The particular one that I went with is normal 26 gauge sheet still. Nothing fancy about it. Honestly, I think the whole sheet was about four or five dollars not much at all the other type of metal sheet that I picked up was this this is this is 22 gauge weld sheet metal so this is to fill in gaps when you're welding uh, this ended up being too thick this doesn't flex very well um, I know if I kept bending it I would definitely leave a crease in it which would leave it useless for what I'm trying to use it for so this I'm gonna go put in the garage and this will probably go on a truck part Now the other sheet that I recently picked up for the video is this. This is 26 gauge zinc coated metal. Now the fact that it's zinc coated doesn't mean anything for what we're doing. It's not going to affect anything that we're 
using it for. Um, it's not going to rub off and leave zinc shavings anywhere. Now when you get it, it's going to come in a long sheet like this and you're going to have to measure and cut it based on whatever printer you're putting it on. On mine, I'm putting it on my CR10s. So your lock build is going to come with a sticky back on it. All I did after I cut the sheet steel to the square that I needed is I took it off, stuck it on here. This bends fairly well. This bends probably good enough to do what I needed to do, but I could still go a little bit better, but we'll get into that. So my first thought was I don't feel like using magnets. I don't have any heavy duty magnets. Magnets, I'm just going to use clips. I didn't think a clip on each corner would be sufficient. So I bought some aluminum bracing. This comes in uh, three or four foot sticks. And I thought that once it's on the build plate, I could actually clamp that down and it's gonna give me a much better surface coverage. That was my original plan. After printing with it a couple times, I realized that this is probably overkill and that I don't actually need this on the corners like that. So I ended up using clamps and it turns out it worked fantastic. It worked great. But I still wasn't satisfied with having to clamp and unclamp um, my sheet every time that I needed to take a print off of. So then I ordered magnets. I actually ordered two different kinds of magnets. Now the first set of magnets I ordered off Amazon were neodymium. Um, these are supposedly stronger than the rare earth magnets that I purchased, which are these smaller ones. Now they're both incredibly strong. As you can see, I actually have to use some force. The pull force on the neodymium magnets are 18 pounds. The pull force on the rare earth magnets are only 5.6 pounds. Now that sounds like quite a big difference, but is it going to be enough to make a difference in what I'm doing with it? I started out using the neodymium magnets just because they provide more of a surface coverage. I figured that would be a better choice. And it worked fantastic. It worked great. The only problem is I did not use silicone to put these down. They came with a 3M foam double-sided back, but I felt like the gap that they left was taking away from the force that I actually needed to get a good secure connection, magnetic connection. You can see they are the exact same width as the magnets are, and I didn't like that. So what I'm gonna do is use silicone on that, and that'll hold it in place to the heat bed. Just stick it underneath the heat bed and it worked fine. We're gonna use the rare earth magnets as they have already double-sided tape on the back and it's not foam so it's going to give me a better magnetic connection and we're going to do this on one of the other cr 10 so you guys can actually see how to do it it's pretty easy so let's get to it now i just realized that i didn't record audio separately which means my audio feedback is going to be ridiculous because it's going to be picking up the printers in the background and i am so sorry for that guys bear with me with how bad this video is going to sound I'm sorry. I already know that a CR10's build plate is 12 and an eighth by 12 and an eighth. I've already measured it. So if you don't believe me, or if you're unsure about yours, go ahead and measure it. So with that said, I have my sheet here, which from Lowe's and Home Depot, they come 12, they come 12 by 18. So because it's already 12 by 18, all I need to do is measure 12 inches down and then cut across and it'll be fine. I'm also gonna add a little lip to make it easier to pull on and off the bed. So. It's finished. I have tabs on each side so that you can easily pull up on it. I've already cleaned this side with isopropyl alcohol, aka rubbing alcohol. That way um, all the impurities will be taken off of this. The permanent marker is already taken off that I used to draw my lines with and it is ready to be stuck. Although now that I have my fingerprints all over it, I'm probably going to clean it again. But nonetheless, it's ready now for the uh, lock build to be put on. So my first lock build sheet was orange and I believe it was also like 50 bucks for the sheet. I found this blue version that is the same size, still made by Lockbuild, and it's about $20 to $25 cheaper, or maybe it's even $30. I don't remember, but I'll link it in the bottom nonetheless. So I figured I would at least give the cheaper version a try, and if it's not the same, then it's not a big deal. It's on a sheet, so I can just get another one. Now there's no science really to putting this thing on, all you do is peel the back and stick it on the sheet, so that's what we're going to do. and I'm probably gonna do this to every single one that I've got. Although, now I can see how not straight my edges were. A good thing that doesn't really matter for this. So what I'm gonna do since my camera is doesn't capture me and this very well is I'm going to zoom in on this so you guys can see where I'm putting the magnets at.
And as you can see, they're staying. Obviously not going anywhere. See if this thing actually works. Oh, looky there. So the print just finished. I'm gonna show you guys how easy it is to actually take this plate off now. Literally gonna do this one-handed. Look at how easy that was. Now, these are the sauce buddies that I've been selling and the bed has had a little bit to cool down. You can see it's only at 44 degrees and it was at 60. So let's see if I can bend this one-handed. There you go. You can see one-handed I bent it and it popped off by itself. Well, it detached, it didn't fully pop off, but now that it's detached, just look at how easy that thing came off though. It's so nice. I'm gonna do this to all of my CR-10s. Now something that I should mention if you're gonna print on a lock build or a build tack or any sheet that is similar to those is that you need to print it just a little bit closer than you normally would on glass or PEI sheet. You really have to get a good squish in there for it to stick. But once it does, you're never gonna have to worry about it again. So I hope you enjoyed the video and that you are planning to go do your own magnetic bed on either your CR-10 or whatever printer you may have. I'm going to do a couple different sheets of my own so that when one's done I can immediately pull it, throw another one on, and keep going. It's the whole purpose of it, speeding things up and making it easier to take things off. That was my first video in 2018, hope you guys enjoyed it. So if you guys try to build your own and you have questions, let me know, I'll do my best to answer them. You can hit me up on all the social media networks or leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer whatever you got. So, until next time, hope you guys have a fantastic start to your 2018, and I'll see ya. So I still haven't released this video yet, which is why you're currently watching it now instead of a couple days ago when I said I was going to edit it. The whole reason that I held off on this is because, was because I wanted to record doing two more plates for my other CR-10s for this. And I wanted to try a different method for putting the lock build on the plate. Let's see if this works any better. I just recorded that video, or I thought I was recording that video, the process of me doing these two, and it turns out that I didn't actually record it. That also means that you guys did not hear me talking about my failed plate. So this is what you guys saw on the other printer. And what I did shortly after that video is I tried to clean it with acetone just to see what it would do. Obviously that's a very bad idea. This is what happens when you try to use acetone on these surfaces. Um, it creates a gloss, a sticky gloss, and then it cracks it if you use enough acetone, which I poured quite a bit on here. Um, it was pretty stupid. I really should have done it on an edge just to see what it would do rather than the whole surface, but nonetheless, we're done with it. <laughs> and since the video did not catch me putting these on, I'm gonna show an easier way to do the lock build surface to get it on without any air bubbles and it'll be a little bit easier. So, we're gonna act like that this is a lock build because I don't have any more. I've got two right here that I just did and that's all I ordered. So if this was your lock build sheet, you're gonna peel the protective cover away on the bottom of it, just enough on the edge right there. And then you're going to apply that edge first. And then grab, and as you're pulling away, just start easing into it and flatten it out. There you go. Much easier than the first way that I showed. Um, I cannot believe that that video did not record at all. Now, I did also want to point out what I've learned about the magnets. These little ones do work, but you have to use more of these if you're gonna print taller stuff. The taller your item is, the more the plate's gonna to wanna to be pushed around just a little bit. And while I personally haven't had any issues with it, I wouldn't want one of you guys to run into an issue with it down the road, especially if you're 20 plus hours into a long print. So, these bigger ones are going to be what I'm gonna start using from now on for all of my build plates, but I'm not gonna use the foam double-sided tape that comes with them. This is what I picked up at Home Depot. This is double-sided clear silicone tape. This is sticky as all get out, phrasing. 
And once you stick it on, you're going to have a hard time getting it off. So please make sure that you have your magnets where you want them to be before you put them on. I'll put a link to where you can get this below. Uh, I picked mine up at Home Depot. I'm sure every Home Depot stocks them. I'm sure Lowe's stocks them. But you just cut a square off, you stick it on there, and you stick it on your bed. It's silicone. It's going to be more heat resistant than the foam padding would, which I don't recommend the foam padding anyways. If you use the foam padding, the magnets aren't as strong as what they should be because of the gap that the foam padding actually leaves. So this is a much better choice. With that said, if you've used these, it's okay. It's not gonna hurt anything. I'm still solely using these on the printer that's currently printing right now. No problems whatsoever. Just in the future, I'm gonna start using these instead. And again, the links to both of these will be in the description. And the cool thing about these magnets is that if it's still not strong enough, if you're using one of these, you just put another one on the back of it and it doubles the magnetic force of it. Pretty cool. So the thicker it is, the stronger it's gonna be. Before wrapping the video up, I wanna show off how easy it is actually to get a print off this bed. Now, I just took this off a little bit ago. I printed it, or I started it at the beginning of the night and let it go all night. So now it's had time to cool down. And um, if it does what I think it's gonna do, it's just gonna fall and that's okay. Hopefully it doesn't break. This is the Plantigon by Sam W on you Imagine, and you can get the STL in the bio below. So watch. All I'm gonna do is bend it. You can hear it cracking. That's it. Now, depending on what type of print you're doing, sometimes it'll just fall off. Most of my prints, um, after I crack it the first time, it's loose enough that I can literally tap it and it'll just fall. Uh, looks like that this one had a little bit more adhesion, but it, it still came off, no issues whatsoever. That was so easy. There's no damage to the bed. There's no damage to the print. So yeah, this I'm probably gonna do this to every single printer I get from now on, aside from the process. Unless I come up with a better solution for that. So thanks for watching guys. Until next time, this is Code to the Improper Engineer. See ya. So I had my build tag. Shit.